With the rise of AI, the potential for low-code or no-code solutions for all kinds of business processes has both changed and evolved. Once the preserve of apps and flows, focus has now shifted to prompts and agents. But does this shift mean that a Microsoft 365 Copilot license is all you need to be a successful maker in the AI age? Some recent changes Microsoft has made to what's included with this license might lead us to think that this is the case. Let's take a look at what's on offer, what's changed, and how the Low Code Maker toolset has evolved to be Copilot centric. But before we start, a quick introduction. My name is Nick. I help smaller businesses to achieve more using AI, and I specialize in Microsoft 365 Copilot and the AI tools that are part of Microsoft's platform. If what you see in this video is useful to you, it'd be great if you could give it a like, drop a comment below letting me know what helped you the most, and consider subscribing so that you can see more like this in the future. And if you need more direct help with your organization's co-pilot adoption or another AI project, consider reaching out to learn how I can help. Information on this is down in the description. A core part of the Microsoft 365 Copilot offer has always been extensibility. And all the way back to the first release of the product two years ago, different points of integration have existed into the tools that makers would traditionally use within the Microsoft stack. Some of my earliest videos exploring Copilot extensibility centered on triggering Power Automate flows from a Copilot chat. But while this is still something that's somewhat possible, the real focus today is on building agents. How agents are licensed in the context of Microsoft 365 Copilot has been something of an evolution itself. There are two classes of agent, declarative and custom, and the tools a maker might use to create these include two different Copilot Studio experiences, now called Copilot Studio Lite in Copilot Chat, and the full, fully power platform integrated Copilot Studio. In recent months, the experience of a declarative and custom agent to a Copilot Chat user has harmonized somewhat, and every type of Copilot Studio agent has been able to be published to Copilot Chat. But there existed additional licensing complexity that impacted the cost of the agent, depending on which features were used, how it was initiated, and which license for Copilot Chat applied to the user. And charges that were incurred could be dealt with either through purchasing Copilot Studio message entitlement, now called credits, or through enabling pay as you go. Now though, Microsoft has taken yet another run at this issue by once again altering the licensing landscape and essentially making all the components you can use in Copilot Studio completely free for Microsoft 365 Copilot license users if they're used in the context of Microsoft 365 Copilot. We'll get onto that in a minute. So this means that in most scenarios, if you carry a Microsoft 365 Copilot license, you have the ability to do pretty much anything you could previously do across Power Platform included in that license, as long as you can do it from the chat pane. The few change check marks on this table are in my mind a big story around where low code and no code are going for Microsoft. Let's consider those things that have always been included. The basic answering capability of your agents, whether classic answers that are predefined responses in the scope of Copilot Studio, or generative answers when we want an agent to use AI to create an appropriate answer, are a simple foundation of the agent chat experience. Tenant grounding is the big selling point of Microsoft 365 Copilot, in that it has access not just to a static list of files or other resources, but can utilize data from across your organizational graph to give you a contextually relevant and up-to-date answer. And agent actions are those things the agent does that act upon other services or data, the single step calls to send an email or update a message. But now, Microsoft has included everything for Microsoft 365 Copilot license users, adding two really important new capabilities that can be used without cost. First is agent flows. You can effectively think of agent flows as an updated version of Power Automate that lives entirely within the scope of Copilot Studio. You can build agent flows with a variety of triggers, but for the purposes of Microsoft 365 Copilot included usage, we are solely thinking about ones that are initiated from an agent. That agent flow, whether it's two steps or 200 steps, then lives within the context of an agent as a tool that can be called and executed with resultant defined inputs and outputs, just like any Power Automate flow. 
Second are the AI tools or prompt actions as they were initially called as part of Copilot's first extensibility offering. These allow you to utilize a specific prompt with a specific model to define the necessary inputs to execute that prompt correctly and even to decide exactly how the output will be modeled. This is AI use with tighter control where you are confining the AI processing inside a tool that has an output in a reasonably expected way. Within the scope of what's included, you can leverage models from GPT-4.1 Mini all the way up to GPT-5 without additional charge. On a practical level, these two newly included features have something very important in common. They inject additional rigor and predictability into the execution of your agents. An agent is designed for some level of autonomy. It can be given a fairly loose set of instructions and left to get on with finding the right answer. When this works, it can appear like magic, but when it doesn't, the outputs can be truly mind-blowingly stupid. And in my view, the key to using these tools responsibly is to ensure that we inject enough control and predictability into what's going on, that the magic can deliver broader value while the mind-blowingly stupid gets trapped by the guardrails we put in place. An agent with a bunch of agent actions as tools can do a lot of stuff, but Copilot Studio itself offers a fairly limited range of capabilities to put custom guardrails in front of those actions. For an action like sending an email, you pretty much either get the option to lock it down so it can only send what and to whom you specifically tell it, or you can let the AI agent freewheel itself to whatever answer it pleases. I could demand that the interactive user approve the action before it happens, but that's really the extent of the oversight I can build in. For most scenarios, the right controls that allows the agent to be useful while also allowing it to be safe sit somewhere in between. Say you build an agent flow that allows the agent to send an email. The input generated by the agent for this flow can be exactly the same as the input for the simple send an email action, but I can put whatever custom logic between that input and action I need to satisfy the needs of this process while also staying safe. I can also make 100% sure that the communication is logged in an external CRM or that the right account rep is copied through a search of an internal database. If I try to do all that stuff using just instructions in the agent, depending on how good my instructions are and how smart a model I chose, I could probably make it fairly reliable, but I couldn't be 100% sure that it would always, without fail, take all those steps before the email got sent. It's smart for Microsoft to throw in tools like this that both add really useful capabilities and also enable agents to be safer and more reliable. The average Microsoft 365 Copilot user, who is ultimately a business user or manager, is unlikely to take full advantage of these tools. But for those who are aspiring makers or are already experienced with Power Apps or Power Automates, it's possible to just pick up that knowledge and skill and to start to port them over to the agent-first Copilot ecosystem. So this returns us to the question I posed at the start of this video. Is the Microsoft 365 Copilot license, with these new additions, all you need as a maker in the AI age? Well, the answer will come down to that caveat I mentioned, that these new inclusions are solely for scenarios that are initiated in the scope of Microsoft 365 Copilot. What does initiated in Microsoft 365 Copilot mean? Well, the thing that kicks off the use of these tools must be an interactive chat session with your user account somewhere that you can interact with your agent, either Copilot Chat or in an applicable Microsoft 365 app in the Copilot Chat pane. No automated triggers or scheduled flows. The services in question must be used in the scope of the chat. Outside of this, there are, of course, other options. An autonomous agent is just one that is triggered by an external Power Automate flow. So you can literally use any trigger available in Power Automate or one that you create for yourself to execute an agent. However, given that the resulting agent will consume either Copilot credit capacity or pay-as-you-go billing based on how it's triggered, not based on who made it, a Copilot license doesn't give you any benefits here. Given that autonomous triggers for Power Automate are included in the seeded Power Automate for Microsoft 365 that's granted to all Microsoft 365 licensed users, this license indifference for Copilot Studio agents can feel a little jarring and seem very expensive. 
However, when compared to other arrangements for pay-as-you-go across Power Platform, Copilot Studio can seem very attractive. Run a premium flow without an associated license in a pay-as-you-go environment, and you're gonna pay 60 cents per flow run, whereas an autonomous agent that only has a few actions might cost pennies. The problem is that in the old world of Power Platform, the license applied to the user is the key feature in how much it costs. Whereas in the age of agents, the context the service is used in becomes one of the most important factors, license or not. The right answer for you will depend on your use. If your processes only lend themselves to scenarios where they must happen on a schedule or have to trigger based on an external event, then unless you're going to get huge benefit from an agent over a flow, you're probably sticking with Power Automate. A similar consideration could apply to Power Apps. If you need a highly customized collaborative app leveraging lots of different data, then the chat pane probably isn't a good canvas for your ambitions. But there are two factors that also need to be considered. First, the way agents work as an output-focused rather than process-focused tool is probably the future of this space. And second, for the majority of makers who are building simple tools for themselves or their immediate teams, the benefits of building those tools directly into Copilot shouldn't be ignored. For organization-wide enterprise automation, I still think the Power Automate or Power Apps have a lot of life in them, alongside the new possibilities that agents create. But for individual productivity enhancement, retooling toward being agent first probably makes a lot of sense for a lot of people. And with what Microsoft has thrown into a Microsoft 365 Copilot license, you probably have most of what you need to meet your goals included in that product. Also consider that in an environment where you're mixing licensed with pay-as-you-go entitlement, Copilot Studio and its associated tools start to make a lot of sense. We talked about Power Automate pay-as-you-go, but Power Apps pay-as-you-go is even more costly at $10 per user per app per month. And that's all well and good for an enterprise app where there's a small number of approved apps that get fairly constant use. But for makers who are creating small tools they want to share with others, it's simply not feasible. Copilot Studio, in the way it's structured, actually makes far more sense in this regard, in that you pay a fairly small amount per use for those pay-as-you-go users. And while the step up to a full Microsoft 365 Copilot license is far more than a Power Automate Premium or Power Apps Premium license, what you get thrown in from the get-go with Copilot is far more than with either of those products. So in conclusion, I don't see the rest of Power Platform going anywhere anytime soon. But the future for low-code and no-code makers probably better aligns with what's now thrown in with Microsoft 365 Copilot than with any other individual license you'd add on from the Power Platform lineup. What do you think? Are these inclusions making you change how you think about the Microsoft 365 Copilot license? Do Microsoft changes make sense to promote a future view of being a maker? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.